Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about operations with complex numbers. Addition, subtraction, we'll do two multiplication, and then on my second page, we're also going to do some division where we talk about conjugates and that stuff. We're going to cover all four of our operations in this video. So looking at this first example, we've got a negative 3 plus 7i, that's our first uh, binomial, and then we're adding to that another binomial, which is 1 plus 3i. So remember, anytime we have a set of parentheses, we have to look, okay, what's out front of it? Do we need to distribute it in? In this case, I don't see anything outside of this parenthesis, uh, so that means there's a positive 1 outside of the parentheses. And same thing here, I don't see anything right here other than a plus sign, so that means there's an understood positive 1 in front of that parenthesis as well. So we could distribute in a positive 1 to get rid of the parenthesis, and distribute in a positive 1 to get rid of that parenthesis, and it's not going to change anything though, because positive 1 times anything is just exactly what you start with. So we can go ahead and rewrite this with no parentheses. If you want to take the time to actually distribute, by all means do so. That's technically what's happening here. But once we remove those parentheses, it's just negative 3 plus 7i plus 1 minus 3i. So notice I just rewrote it without the parentheses. Okay, so at this point we just want to look for like terms. As far as my constants, I have a negative 3 and a positive 1. So let's go ahead and combine those. Negative 3 plus 1, that would give us a negative 2. And then I also have a like term right here, right? This positive 7i minus 3i. So in order for them to be like terms, they have to both have the i, right? So 7i minus 3i would give us a positive 4i. So that would be our answer, so negative 2 plus 4i. I like to write it with the constant first and then the um, imaginary, the 4i second. That's just how I prefer to write it. Your teacher may prefer you to do a different way. You go with the order that they tell you. So addition is pretty straightforward. Let's look at our second example. This one we're subtracting. Notice we got that subtraction symbol in between our two binomials. So we have to be very careful with subtraction. So in the same way that we looked at the front of the parenthesis in this one, we're going to do the same thing here. So out front in this parenthesis, I don't see anything. So that's just a positive 1 again. And I know that when I distribute a positive 1 in, is it going to change anything? No. So I know 2 plus 3i, I can just rewrite. That is not a positive 1 out in front of that parenthesis. It's actually a negative 1. And when we have a negative 1, absolutely that's going to change things when we distribute it in. So this one we want to actually like walk through the step of doing. So negative 1 times 6 would give me a negative 6. And a negative 1 times negative 5i, well that's going to give me a positive 5i. So notice what happened is it just flipped my signs, right? The negative, um, the positive became a negative, the negative became a positive. If you want to think of it that way, oh just all my signs are going to flip, you can. I like to just walk through the steps each time, that's easiest to me. Okay, so let's combine our like terms now because we definitely have some. We have this positive 2 and this negative 6, those are both constants. So 2 minus 6, that's actually going to give me a negative 4. And then we've got this positive 3i and positive 5i. So 3 plus 5 is positive 8i. And there's our simplified form. Um, of the original. Okay, now let's switch it up and do some multiplication. In this case, I have a binomial of uh, 2 minus 4i being multiplied by 6 plus 8i. So we, when we have a binomial times a binomial, 
I like to just foil. That's just kind of what I grew up doing. That's what I like teaching. However, I know some people don't want to teach foil and they'd rather just so show that you're taking this two and distributing it there and there. You're taking this negative four I and distributing it there and there. Whatever method works for you. Foil stands for first, outer, inner, last. So we're gonna start by doing our first. So two times positive six, that would give me a positive 12. And next we would do our outer. So two times positive 8i. That's going to give me positive 16i. And I know there might be people that are thinking, like, how are you able to combine those two? They're not like terms. You couldn't combine them up there, right? We have to be very careful because up here we're adding and subtracting, right? So we, we can only combine like terms. But when you're multiplying, you can have a lot more freedom, right? So we can do 2 times 8i and get 16i. You have to look at what operation is going on to determine what you can combine and not combine. Okay, so let's keep going. Now let's do our inner. So negative 4i times 6, that would be a negative 24i. And now our last, so negative 4i times 8i. So that's going to give me, we got to be very careful here, negative 4 times 8, that's going to give me a negative 32. But then when we have this i times i, this is the first time we've seen that in this video, i, that's really an i to the first times i to the first. And remember way back when we talked in one of my first videos ever was on laws of exponents. And so when you are multiplying two uh, powers, right? So we've got i to the first and i to the first, we actually add the exponents. So one plus one is two. So the answer is negative 32 i squared. We can just combine like terms, these two like terms in the middle. So I know some of you are thinking, well, what about that i? He's an i as well. Right, but he's an i to the second. We're actually going to take care of that in a minute because that's a kind of a a special thing that we need to look at. But for these just regular i's, remember to add and subtract, it has to be the exact same letter with the exact same exponent. So you have to be very careful for them to be quote unquote like terms. So we still have our 12. And then 16 minus 24, that's actually going to give us a negative 8i. And then we still have this minus 32. I squared. But before I write my I squared, I squared is actually, and I'll write it right here, I squared is actually um, simplified negative 1. So this is really negative 32 times not I squared, but negative 1. Now I'd want to actually simplify. So what is negative 32 times negative 1? Well, that would be, so we got 12 minus 8i, and uh, that would be a positive 32. So now I've got some additional like terms I can combine. I've got this 12 and this positive 32. And 12 plus 32 is 44 minus 8i. And there would be our simplified version. Let's look at another multiplication one. I think those have a lot of steps, so I want to make sure we get enough practice on these. Again, I have a binomial times a binomial, so I want to FOIL. Let's do our first 8 times 1, which is positive 8. I want to do our outer, so that's 8 times positive 3i, which would be a positive 24i. And then we want to do our inner negative 2i times 1, which would just be negative 2i. And then our last, negative 2i times positive 3i, which would give me negative 6i squared. Remember, i times i is i squared. We can do kind of a couple steps at, at once here if you want, or we can just take it one step at a time. We definitely have some like terms here that we need to combine. 
And then let's go ahead and take care of that I squared. So remember, I squared is just another way of saying negative one. So let's go ahead, while we combine these, let's go ahead and rewrite that I squared as negative one. So we've got eight and then 24i minus two i. That would give us a positive 22i. And then this is a negative six times negative one. Let's go ahead and reduce that. And then what is negative six times negative one? Well, that'd just be positive six, right? So now we've got eight plus 22i plus six. We do wanna combine those final like terms now of eight and six, which would give us 14. So now we've got 14 plus 22 I. So now we're going to look at some division examples for operations with complex numbers. When we're dividing, which keep in mind, anytime we have a fraction bar, that means we're dividing these two. And when we're dividing and we've got an imaginary number in our denominator, we've got to do something called finding the conjugate. Let's quickly review what a conjugate is in math. So a conjugate is formed by changing the sign between two terms in a binomial, right? And it's really easy. And I've shown you some examples here. So like if we had four plus two I, the conjugate would just be four minus two I. And if we had six minus three I, the conjugate would just be six plus three I. So you're just changing that middle sign. So it's pretty easy to create. Our goal in finding the conjugate is so that we can get rid of this i in the denominator. What we're gonna do is figure out, okay, what would be my conjugate of the denominator? In this first example, three plus four i, our conjugate is gonna be, we're gonna multiply by it, our conjugate would be three minus four i. And if we're gonna multiply that, by the denominator, we're also going to multiply it by the numerator. So now let's rewrite this to show the multiplication between the numerator and the denominator. For our numerator, that would be 2 times 3 minus 4i. And for our denominator, that's going to be 3 plus 4i times 3 minus 4i. So for our numerator, we're just uh, going to distribute that 2. So 2 times 3 would be a positive 6. And 2 times negative 4i would be a negative 8i. So when we do our denominator, We've got a binomial times a binomial. And anytime we have a binomial times a binomial, that's a big red flag, you're definitely gonna wanna FOIL, just like we did on the first page. So let's go ahead and FOIL. So we'll do our first, three times three is nine. And our outer, three times negative four i, that's gonna give me a negative 12 i. And now we want to do our inner. So positive 4i times a positive 3 is going to give me a positive 12i. And our last. So 4i times a negative 4i. Be careful, that's a negative 16i squared. So now we just want to combine any like terms. So definitely in the denominator, I see a negative 12i plus 12i, which hopefully you're thinking, isn't that zero? Yeah, a negative 12 plus 12 would be zero. These two actually just cancel each other out. And let's remember, i squared, just like we did on the first page, i squared is actually negative one. This is really negative 16 times negative one. So let's rewrite that just so we can see it. So six minus eight i divided by nine. And then I've got a negative 16 times negative one. That's that i squared. So now let's actually reduce this. So we've got a 6 minus 8i over negative 16 times negative 1 is a positive 16. 9 plus 16 is going to give us a 25. 
And at this point, you'd want to ask yourself, okay, can this reduce any more? Like, could I reduce 6 divided by 25 and 8 divided by 25? Could I reduce both of those? And I can't. So in this case, this is just our simplified answer, 6 minus 8i divided by 25. But we now don't have that i in the denominator, which is what we want. So in this next example, this one's kind of a little bit of a unique example. And um, it wouldn't be super common to see this, but I have definitely come across it. So I want to make sure I teach you guys in case you guys see it. So notice in the denominator, it's just a monomial, right? It's just a I. There's no binomial here. There's no two term. We can still form the conjugate and it will still work the same. We just, instead of using I, our conjugate would be the changed sign of negative I. And it is going to work the same. So we're going to multiply to get rid of that I on the bottom. We're going to times it by negative I. And then we're going to do the same to the numerator. So now let's actually write this out, like showing the multiplication. So we've got 6 plus 2i, and we're multiplying that by negative i. Now you can write negative i in the back or the front. It's up to you, whatever your preference is. I'll just write it kind of as we wrote it up here. It doesn't matter. Times negative i. And for our denominator, that's just going to be i times negative i. For the top, we're going to distribute. So we've got um, 6 times negative i, which would just give us negative 6i. And then we've got 2i times negative i, and that's going to give us negative 2i. And then in our denominator, i times negative i, that's going to give us a negative i squared. Now guys, I just caught a mistake. I made a careless error as I was moving and I hope you guys caught it too, that 2i times negative i is negative 2i squared. It can be so easy to forget that as you're moving, as you saw, I just did. Moving forward, we now want to reduce these i squareds. So remember, i squared is just another way of saying negative one when we reduce it. Instead of writing these i squareds, let's show them as negative ones. We've got a negative 6i minus 2 times, because we're taking out that i squared and we're going to put that negative 1. All right, and then on the denominator, we've got negative i squared, but remember i squared is just negative 1. Be very careful there. So that ends up being a negative for right there, and then the i squared becomes a negative 1. Okay, so now we actually want to reduce. Looking at this, I've got negative 2 times negative 1. Well, that's going to be just, so we'll have negative 6i plus 2, right? Positive 2. And then on the denominator, negative 1 times negative 1 is just a positive 1. So now we don't need to actually show this over 1. You can make anything a fraction by putting it over 1. You don't need to show it if the denominator is just a positive 1. But I do want to go ahead and rewrite this. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I like to see the constant first and then the imaginary i second. That's just personal preference. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time as a positive 2 minus 6i. If you show it over 1, it's not wrong. It's just, it's not necessary. Okay, so here's a you try for you guys. There's two examples. I will post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.